All right, hello and welcome. How is everyone doing on what I hope is an extremely happy Tuesday for all of y'all? John, do you have an echo today? It's probably with those eyes, anyone, but I can't hear Matthew. You can't hear? Why not? Why not? Hello, everyone, by the way. And Matthew sounds odd as Tom's is saying. I swear. I swear I've done nothing. Thomas says Matthew sounds odd, but John sounds good. I'm glad. I'm glad John. I can hear John. Uh, they can hear me. Everyone can hear John. Which I mean, I still can't hear Matthew. Choice. If you've got to hear one of us, I'd hear John. But apparently, I sound. I sound odd. Sci-Fi says you sound echoey. I, I sound echoey. What on here? Am I? Am I picking up my own? Nope. There is nothing outputting except the one microphone that. Uh... Oh. How's that, everyone? Here now. How's that, everyone? So yes. Uh... <laughs> no one should be surprised by this at this point. No one should be surprised. Uh... No. Nope. So, what was going on for anyone who cares? is I have two microphones. Uh, I have my main mic, which sounds wonderful, and then I have this little lapel mic, which if ever I can do a stream and convince Amy to join us, you know, she'd be able to wear this. And I got a camera right here that, you know, we could have the whole nine yards. It'd be really, really fun. But I also, whenever I'm making a video, if I record myself, I use the lapel mic and I mute the main mic. So I only get the one audio channel coming in which I was doing for a video video that I'm extremely excited about. Uh, this is, this is uh, a video actually for John. Mm. Uh, I, I have a subscri subscribe star and, and John is my first su subscriber Patreon. How do you, how do you address? Yeah, I don't know. Supporter Su supporter. He he's, he's my first supporter. And for, for the tier he chose, I, I said, Hey, pick a subject and uh, for a video and I will, you know, I'll see what I can say about it. N no promises. Well, he picked just the best subject possible and I've had a lot to say about it and I'm really excited because it, it is just coming together so well, I feel like, and, uh, you know, look forward to that in the next week or two. It, it takes me a while to do videos, unfortunately. Uh, but hey, I, I know I know there's some some missing in the pub, but that's what I'm spending my money nights doing. It's not just time wasted, uh, except last night. Uh, last night, <laughs> I had a, a vomity child, uh, so oh. uh, we we dealt with that some. So you know, there's that's life. But I, but well, I'm, I, sure I'm excited. Because I'm sure when the video comes out, it'll be quite a surprise for some people. It it will. I hope so. But it, it, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I don't build this up just to, you know, have it be like, this is the worst video Matthew has ever done. Uh, <laughs> we'll certainly see. But guys, with all that said, let me try this again. Hello and welcome. Happy Tuesday. Hope you are doing well. 54.5 Axis Radio saying, let's go Darwin, which I, I think is the better chant. You would. Uh, well, I, I'm saying like, hey, you know, that's not a pejorative. I'm assuming that is done, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in in good in good standing. Like, not not trying. <sighs> Way to make me me doubt myself. I assumed that was <laughs> was actually saying, let's go, Darwin. Anyways, uh, you just can't 40... tell these days. <laughs> it's true. Uh, Forty seven Yorktown advertising for Darwin and goat's milk 2024 it's it's better than some candidates I've seen not gonna lie <laughs> sci-fi nations here how are you doing sci-fi I hope it is going well for you the multi-gun man is asking how it's going for John John how is it going uh, not too bad thanks Thomas Potts is here how are you doing Thomas I saw that I, I saw that article you linked over in Discord. That's messed up, man. Uh, some some school bus got hit, and the lady's like, I hope they're all Trump supporters. I'm like, what the heck? Uh, 
I mean, I I can't I can't imagine rejoicing over the, the like like hoping that they are people that you disagree with politically. Like, come on, come on, man. It's just common sense. Uh, it, that that's gross, man. Um, it's it, it saddens me that there's people in the world like that. Uh, when instead it's like, oh, hey, maybe. Maybe just maybe, regardless of political affiliation, this is one of those things where we should go, oh crap, are the kids okay? I I for anyone who's not okay, their their parents could be as far opposite from me on everything in life, and I'd still hope that their children are okay and certainly get better soon. Of course. Uh Thomas wants to know, is there no sound? Is it just me? Uh, yes, I fixed that, and there's gonna be there's going to be a lot of this as we go through here. <laughs> uh, Multi Gunman is asking me to keep the sexual harassment to a minimum this week. No more of my shaved legs and back black dresses talk, okay? Uh, there's never, ever a promise of shaved legs, man. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry that that just wasn't in the books, but I'll, I'll try and I'll try and keep it to a minimum this week. Uh, Thomas is saying that the skunk isn't the turtle standing national animal, it's the dung beetle. It's on their flag. Appropriate. There you go. And I am glad that at least at least you sounded good, John. Which I guess something to kind of file away for later. I should make it such that my front microphone, also the lapel mic, also gets sent out to to uh Streamyard. That way, if something like this happens again, you're like, "Yeah, Matthew, you sound like garbage." And <laughs> I mean, thankfully, thankfully, I was actually paying attention to the chat today. There have been many a stream where it's been five to ten minutes before I I looked over there. <laughs> Very many. Um, let's see. Kind of, I sound, I sound, sound kind of tinny. Yeah, that's because it was you know a little bit away. And you know lapel mics, they're they're somewhat directional. Um, I mean, it's it's not like it's truly directional, like not like a shotgun mic is, but it it's definitely designed to pick up sound from this outward area. So when it, when it's facing away from me, like two or three feet, it, it definitely doesn't work very well. Uh, Sci-fi is saying main mic plus my Logitech cam has a mic. That's true, but I don't have a Logitech camera set up. I I actually have a a Canon digital left cell R thingy that I use as a webcam that I, I got in a really good sale last Thanksgiving, which I, I actually intended to do a video about that forever long ago. Like I, I did such, I had such drama getting this, this camera, uh, <laughs> repaired a couple cameras off eBay, took the money, bought this one. Actually, I bought a different one. That one was garbage. Returned it. It was it was a hassle. Anyway, when I was done, I'm like, hey, you know what? I should talk about different camera options. Put it in my the the videos I've been doing about uh, you know the streamer's guide. Another thing you should might work on is talking about how your Streamlabs bot is the censoring people again. Is it really? Why? Yes. Multi Why? said you're multi said you were being anal about something, and Streamlabs <laughs> didn't like that. Okay. <laughs> That one, <laughs> that one, I'm, I'm not too surprised that it filtered. Um, I think that's, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, there are so... Streamlabs deleted everything he said? Oh my goodness. Yes. It says he was timed out for one second. At least that's what it looks like on my end. So they deleted all his messages. Wow, how do I undo this? Restore, restore. Oh my goodness, uh, they don't give you this option. They don't give you this option. Multi gunman, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, I don't have an option to like show it again. Um, I don't, I don't feel like that was foul language. I, I apologize. I, I gotta, re I gotta remember to do this, guys. I'm to, to log into Streamlabs at some point and way turn down the sensitivity setting. Uh, because all I did was like, oh yeah, um, I didn't say make it family friendly. I just said uh, filter out extremely like the the highest setting or not the highest setting like the like like the, just the worst ones. Just filter that out. Um, but I, I didn't ask it to, to filter out everything. Wow. I, I I'm sorry, multi gun man. And then did 
Did Thomas get get banned? No. I don't yeah, think he's, so. He's good. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so yep, yeah, uh, sounds good now. Is it a review of Farpoint and Encounter? No, I said Farpoint Encounter at. Uh, I don't know. I gotta go back and listen to that. I, I could have sworn I said Encounter at Farpoint, but we all know me. We all know me. I definitely wouldn't put it past me to, to uh, bung it up like that. Uh, Sci-Fi wants to know a pejorative or a bajorative. You heard I said bajorative. Interesting. That sounds like something a Cardassian would come up with as some sort of slur mm. for Bajorans. You know, that was just a pejorative insult. Don't even, don't even do that to me, gold legged so and so. Uh, Thomas, I am not going to be buying you a million dollars worth of Lord of the Rings stuff for Christmas. That is, that is so not something. That is so overpriced. That was another thing he linked on Discord, and it's. Good timing on that. I love that one. No, darling, no. Uh, thank you to me, apparently. You know, it's kind of like when you're a musician, you put a fiver in the hat, just kind of get people primed to pay. Uh, so yeah, I, I sent myself a donation saying, sorry, gunman, my beau. I'll take you out to dinner on the beach wearing my Speedo. Oh. oh sorry, Multi. It, it looks like... Uh, it looks like I'm not going to be refraining from such things this week. Uh, and Thomas saying that her account was full of stuff like that, the Lord of the Rings stuff, that's... That's insane. Insane. I think he might have been stuff about the bus. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, that's even more insane. Twitter, Twitter's where people go just to be the worst they are. I mean, that's why I'm like... I thought it was so absurd when Trump got banned from Twitter. I'm like, really? This is what did it for you? You uh, Have you looked at your own content? I mean, you're a step above Reddit. Kind of equal to 4chan, just about. Maybe not quite that bad, but I mean, you're, you're pretty bottom of the internet barrel, Twitter. Uh, so, no. Uh, Thomas is claiming I have naturally smooth legs. I do not. I do not. Uh, I, I know there... It, it would be nice. Uh, there's a lot of bicyclists who swear you shave the legs to get better speeds. I don't believe it. And I, I, I don't care about whatever, <laughs> whatever benefits it gets. I will stick to just the way God made me. Oh, gosh. Uh, I'll fix it after Nomad. Exactly, Thomas. Exactly. Uh, and Mother Gunman, I can see your comments, yes. So, let's get... Now, now that we got the harassment stuff out of the way, and the technical difficulties out of the way, let's actually get this stream going, guys. So this is the way it works, everyone. I am going to drop a link that I just put Verish into the chat. Hopefully it's showing up now. And what you'll do is I'll pin this. You can click on the link and you'll come to the screening room. All this does is this lets you watch it exactly at the same time that we're watching it. So you come in to the middle of the episode. Don't worry. You will pick up exactly where we are. Uh, however, this only works right now during this stream. So if you're in the future, I'm sorry, you will have to go to PeacockTV.com and sign up for one of their free accounts, which, uh, you know, I recommend you do it. They, if you, especially if you like monster movie stuff, they just released a, or, or they just greenlit a, uh, oh, who are the people's names? I forget the, the name of the show is the, the girl and the door or the girl and the door, door in the woods, something like that. And it is part of this huge monster cinematic universe, uh, the other MCU. And if you like kind of creepy monster horror stuff, you are going to like this series. Uh, so, I mean, it's not just old stuff that Peacock TV does. They, they actually do some newer stuff as well. And it's a free account. So the only reason I can understand why you wouldn't want to do this is if, and understandably, you just don't want another online service. There's so many of them right now. You don't want them even if it is free. But 
that is the option if you're in the future. The other option, of course, is to go to Amazon, go to eBay, get the VHS tape if you got them, and just buy a physical copy of it. Uh, the show is is well worth it. I've thoroughly been enjoying season three so far, uh, and I really enjoyed season one. Season two, bit of a low spot, but even that one had a lot of great episodes, so go out and get it. If you are in the future and you don't want to do that, or if you're here right now and you can only you know, use one device, maybe you're at work, maybe you're on your cell phone, maybe you just don't like uh, uppity YouTubers telling you what to do and you're saying, say, screw that, I'm going to do what I want. We got you covered there too. I'll include a clip every three to five seconds we grab one and that way you just have some sort of picture as a frame of reference for what's going on. There will be no audio unless I mess that up somehow, which <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. But assuming, assuming I don't have that wrong, there will be no audio. It's just going to be a still image once every three to five seconds, just as a point of reference. So with all that out of the way, I hope that you are over in the streaming room or screening room. And we're going to get this started here, guys. So I'll give you a quick three count. Hit that play button. It will be synced up if, uh, you know, you're in the future, blah, 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 blah. So here we go. Three, two, one. Hit that play button. And don't, okay, I don't, I don't think you should be able to hear anything. It seems like maybe, just maybe, I've done this a little right. But we got missiles coming at ya. So you may remember in the second season, there's a really good episode. In fact, it was one of their best episodes of the season where uh, Bridger's brain had been used as a template for this advanced AI and it was shooting off missiles at certain key targets. Uh, and, and so it looks like we got the same situation going on right now. We got some missiles heading for what appears to be a military target of some sort. Uh, the Mullet Gunman wants to know, can I get a list of words I've banned or a list of approved words would be shorter? <laughs> I'm sorry, I, did you get hit again? Uh, I don't think so, but... Okay, no, no, I... I have no idea. Um, I, I, I'll try and look at it this week. I, I just about guarantee I'll forget, but I'll try and look this week. Because I, I personally haven't added anything to the list. Uh, I just chose a preset, I want to say. Well, apparently we have UEO missiles heading for a Macronesian target. And she wanted, she wanted to tell her father something, but waited just a moment too long. I mean, maybe she was trying to be polite and let this guy take a breath, but he was too busy giving a countdown to her death. We're <laughs> an edgewise, like, oh, you're gonna die in five, four, three, and she's like, quick, tell my dad, <laughs> dad. Whoops. Uh, and and so we go. The UEO has declared war apparently on Macronesia. I can sympathize with that lady, though. You know, she's trying to get a word in, and somebody else is just rambling on and on. They're it's just the worst. <laughs> Those uppity YouTubers, I tell you what. <laughs> Speaking of those uppity YouTubers, he better make sure his phone's on silent. And talk, multi gunmen, absolutely. I think YouTubers are extremely uppity. <laughs> I mean, fair is fair. They're an uppity bunch. Oh, but my, my guest for this week, my guest for this week for Chains of Commands, I believe was uh, we're going to have to, there's going to be some scene where Ford was being tortured and had to uh, correctly answer how many Darwins there were. And of course, there'd be four uh, dolphins. So we'll, we'll see how, how close I was to that. Okay, that. That's not what I guessed, but it's probably closer than what I actually <laughs> guessed. <laughs> But it was an unprovoked tact. It was launched without warning of any kind. The UEO 
did not intend to do this. They, they're telling the Macronesian Alliance that it was uh, a programming error, that it was unintentional. And unfortunately, he doesn't actually know. This is the guy you usually see on the view screen, but he decided to show up in person this week. And he's kind of confused. He's saying, look, it launched from the Marina, Mariana Trench. Mar Mariana? Mariana? The Trench. And, you know, Captain Jell goes, well, we don't have a base there. And uh, this present guy's like, well, yeah, technically we do. We dropped one there about a year ago. And we've sh sent some ships to investigate. But it's been six months we heard from them, and the ships that we sent, we haven't heard anything back from them. But apparently this guy, who's been in charge of the secret base down in the trench, he, uh, he's well known by Jellico. But if they can't get him to come back with them, whatever's going on there, then the orders for the sequest are to destroy the base. And Dagwood is very, very interested in a cockroach on the floor. <laughs> and no. Henderson, Henderson wants to squish it. He goes, no. He, you know, he catches her foot. And I I actually had a co-worker who did this once. Where there was a cockroach. And he kept trying to catch it. And he didn't want to kill it. He was going to catch it and then take it outside. He was letting it walk on his hands. Ugh. At Baskin Robbins, Ugh. and uh, there is a, a customer there. Now, under, understand in Texas, you're gonna get cockroaches. They, they, you know, some places they get mice, and you just you put out the traps, and there's nothing you can do. It doesn't matter how clean you keep your place, you get them. Uh, Texas, at least where I live, cockroaches. It doesn't matter how clean you keep the place, the door isn't perfectly sealed. They come in, and so. He's over here trying to catch it and sitting on top of, you know, they lift it up and then the scoop is on that lifter part. And I'm like, dude, squish it. He, he was insane. Just insane. And of course, the guy left and filed a complaint with, uh, <laughs> with the um, health inspectors. He didn't work for us long. We, we fired him real quick. And he's like, my mom's a lawyer. I'm like, who cares? Texas is at will. <laughs> What was going on? They, they're going to take one of the uh, transport shuttles, basically, to go to this base down in the trench. And they're like, well, why not take Sequest? And he goes, um, Macronesia thinks we just attacked them, and you want us to send the most advanced sub into a trench? Think that went through. Uh, a trench where the missiles came from. Like, okay, yeah, not the, not the best move. So he's going to take Dagwood and one other person. Probably her. Not her. Lucas. And she makes a good point here. She's, she's pointing out the fact that only her, uh, Lieutenant... No Fredericks. fear chip. Fredericks, thank you. <laughs> Lieutenant Fredericks and Jellico are the only two in this room who haven't been on ice for 10 years. And she knows why they've chosen Jellico to go handle this. His personal relationship with the guy on the base, uh, who apparently they got some history with. And by not letting the rest of Sequest know that he had history with them, it's setting up for a, a not ideal situation.
These aren't bad uniforms, by the way, for the Macronesian people. Yeah. I mean, it's nice to see that there's something more than just the private army of Dion Industries. It kind of reminds me of the uniforms from Command and Conquer. And of course, exactly what Jellico was concerned about happens. The Sequest got too close. And this Macronesian guy's like, wait a minute. The UAS UEO said the source of the missiles was going to be destroyed. But no, no, here's Sequest. And you know what? They started this. We're going to return fire. And is anyone having any issues with the audio on the episode or the stream? Are you? I'm not, but uh, somebody was saying that it sounded kind of low to them. With the... Which part? With the... Which part? They said both the stream the... and the episode, the audio was low. And the episode sounds fine to me. I'm not listening to the stream. Huh. I didn't... I don't see that comment. Is my chat connected? Uh, it's a chat came to the comment came from somewhere else. Okay. Well, personally, I recommend you turn up your computer volume at this point because it, it's, it's coming good, good for me. I mean, it's on my computer, but still. Oh, have a good night, multi gun man. See ya. Well, Ford is being a little too nervous. He keeps asking for status updates like every couple of minutes. And Harrison's like, darling, darling, you gotta calm down. You're making everyone antsy. And sci fis saying that watch room is working just fine. Okay. Thank you. Now, Lewis is kind of being an optimist right now. He's saying, it's. I'm looking through the code. Maybe, maybe this was an accidental misfiring. And Jellico's, Jellico's just a great captain. He's like, don't be ridiculous. You know, this was, this was clearly targeted because the place they hit was a class three target. Like this, this was uh, absolutely intentional. Oh, I might want to pin the link. Thank you. Absolutely, I want to pin that link. I thought right, I had. Yeah. There we go. And Trek Revere is saying that both, hey Trek Revere by the way, both Bernie Casey who plays the Admiral in this episode and actress who plays his commander, uh, that both of them guest stars in Babylon 5 episode Hunter Prey. And Sci-Fi is saying that the watch room is muted now? Um, it's, it's working okay for me. Is anyone else having that problem? You might want to... You might want to check. Sometimes when I click on the volume slider on YouTube, it doesn't let go of the click. And so I'll move my mouse to another window and it'll drag the volume with it and turn it off on me. Yeah, that's happened to you before. And so also regarding Bernie... Sorry. No, go ahead. I was saying about for Bernie Casey, the Admiral, he was also in uh, Deep Space Nine. He uh, played Cal Hudson. Do you remember who that is? Um, was he the first one who betrayed Ben? For the Maquis? Uh, yes, he was. Good job. Thank you. I'll, I will say this, though. His commander sounds a lot like Cassidy Yates to me, but I don't think it is Cassidy Yates. Her voice just sounds ever so slightly similar to it. Yeah, it's not the same actress. 
I didn't think so. I just remember as, as I was, you know, paying attention to the episode and working out of the corner of my ear, I'm like, wait a minute. Is that, is that Cassidy? But hey, at least now we know that the facility that they dropped down was not uh, abandoned, that there are people still living here. I think, I think her name is Wanda de Jesus. Because she was the other guest star for this week. Right. So, theme of the episode, change the command. Uh, we're seeing a complete breakdown here. That everyone aboard this station should be UEO members. They should be, you know, in the UEO command structure. But they've completely broken off. They said, no, 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 no. This is the, uh, the commander station now. Yeah, they're, they're all a bunch of gangsters sci-fi. Meanwhile, aboard the Sequest, the Macronesia has launched their surprise attack. O'Neill picks up the inbound missiles and Ford is like, okay, well, track, track the target. You know, like, I think it's pretty obvious <laughs> the missiles are coming for you. But O'Neill tracks them. He's like, oh, uh, us, we, we're the targets. So the Sequest tries to launch their own missiles to intercept them and, and it gets it just in the nick of time. Of course, unfortunately, just because you get the missiles doesn't mean, you know, you've solved the issue. There's still other problems going on. Like, uh, if, if it's in the water, the shockwave can still damage you. That's how destroyers get subs. They don't necessarily get that dead-on hit. Just getting anywhere close to the sub is enough to cause damage. Of course, it also turns out in this particular case that the missiles were a distraction. And that there are several other shubs from Macronesia launching missiles at them. That guy went flying. Oh, I got some air. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have to wonder what sort of impact it would actually take to send someone flying like that. And especially just send one person flying like that. Like the rest of the bridge crew, they you know they kind of got buffeted a little bit, but that guy. He was like standing right on the deck plate that launched him. <laughs> so James wants to stay and fight, but Henderson Henderson says, you know, atomic turbines to power, maximum speed, get us out of here. And he's He's kind of annoyed by this, which understandably. Understandably. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Ford got knocked out, by the way. That's why so Brody and Henderson aren't arguing about what to do. Which is why you have a, you know, chain of command. Right. 
So which, if I'm not mistaken, Henderson is a junior officer, so she's completely out of line. That's right. I uh, I forgot she first came aboard uh, last the beginning of last season. Yeah. As communications officer, I want to say. I think she was a, supposed to be a helmsman, but she's kind of, I've seen her all over the bridge. Well, you know, not much to do on a sub sometimes. Learn other people's mm-hmm. positions. I guess so. So now we're we're figuring out a, maybe a little bit of the the problem going on between Jellico and this other guy. And Jellico says, "You know, how much do you know about this situation that that occurred?" And goes, well, "Not much." So he was he was uh, stationed as basically a blockade for forty seven days, and on the forty eighth day, a sub runs the blockade. And the guy who's in charge, Van something or other, Van Helden, Van Helsing. Van Alden, I think. Van Halden. Yeah, he says, shoot down the sub. You know, they, they're trying to contact him. Shoot down the sub. The sub's not responding. So Jellico refused. He says, no, I'm not about to open fire on this random sub. And yes, it's coming from an enemy territory. Yes, there's a blockade here. But I refuse. It's, it's this random sub. And it turns out that this random sub had a broken comm system, basically. Like, they finally were able to get a faint radio signal. The comm system was working. It's just very low powered. Which, you know, underwater, there that is an issue. And that if they had fired upon it, they would have been shooting a sub full of innocent refugees. But it doesn't matter. Uh, he disobeyed an order, so he got busted. <laughs> Trek reviewer Hudson. Yes, I, I know his, his name's Hudson, but Jellico it just fits him so much better. He he's such a ca- Captain Jellico, which I like Captain Jellico. I felt like he was a good captain. I mean, especially considering that they were in a military situation. Uh, not a diplomatic one per se, which is what Picard's whole shtick was. But Van Holden wants uh, wants Jellico. You know, and Lucas is going to work on his plan to reverse the polarity. He literally did say that. He said that. <laughs> if if we can reverse the polarity, then. Maybe we can, you know, take down the missiles. Which, just once, I'd like someone to be like, reverse the polarities. Do you not see the diodes? The diodes are there to only allow polarity to go one way. (laughs) And Henderson over here is trying to claim that no one was in command aboard this, on the bridge. And she's wrong. Yeah, it's like not, it's, there's always somebody in command. Like it's embarrassing how wrong she is. Since, as you said, she is just a junior grade officer. Like it even says that right there. Look, Lieutenant J G, Lieutenant Junior Grade. Mm-hmm. When he was brought on last season to be, <sighs> for for a military perspective, you can't say a co-commander with Ford but that was basically his role to to be Ford's equal so he's clearly the third in command yes they established that before and Brody he's saying it's time to go back let's go do this and Henderson's like, no, 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 you can't do this. And he says, hey, I, I'm going to remove you from the bridge. I don't want to. But there is a clear chain of command, and the decision's been made. 
Now, Sci-Fi is saying that Jellico was a tool. He would have failed hard in the actual battle situation. No trust in the crew. I, I disagree. I think Jellico did have trust in the in his crew, but he trusted them to do as he ordered. He, he trusted them to be professional Starfleet officers, the best of the best on the flagship of the of, of the Federation. That if, if he said, this is what we're doing, he expected them to actually go do it. Uh, his main issue was Riker was really undercutting him with the crew. Yes, I think Riker was out of line in that episode. So Van Holden, he's gone crazy. <laughs> he, he's gone <laughs> crazy. But understandably so, they dropped these people into the deepest, darkest pit on the earth and then left them there. Like, like this isn't a, a Rhoda. This is a highly secret facility that they're not letting a bunch of traffic come in and out of. And so now they, they've been slowly going mad in isolation. And he, he's talking about how you can feel the enemy, like you can feel the evilness of humanity is like crawling on your skin. I mean, this is the Agent Smith speech from the Matrix. <laughs> And now he's, you know what the sickness is? The sickness is peace. And that's the, the reason my men were going crazy is because I was trying to impose this artificial notion of peace. And here we have someone who honestly looks kind of like my cousin. <laughs> Coming in to whip Dagwood. And Jekyll's like, what, what good is torturing Dagwood going to do? Great question. And Van Holden, he claims, oh, I'm just, just setting him free. You know, war is what makes us men. And especially Dagwood, he was designed to be a soldier. So, you know, Dagwood has had enough of the whipping and comes in just railing on the guy, gives him a tackle, clotheslines him. And Hudson, you know, the guy is being foolish. He has weapons on him. Hudson steals his knife. And says, you know, release us now. And Hudson or Van Holden's having none of it. He's like, well, that didn't take much. You know, a little provocation. And you're ready to turn to violence. This is my point. This is my point that that we deny ourselves violence. That peace is an illusion. And here you are. The second things get rough, instead of trying to use a peaceful solution, you turn to violence. And Dagwood actually seeming like he's enjoying the fight a bit. You know, arms up. Yeah! And uh, that other guy, he, he looks pr pretty limp. Um, Sci-fi is talking about Jellicle. So he says, for example, he's still no trust. In zero reason other than I am the captain for following boot camp style orders. Well, let's say he is the captain. He doesn't need another reason for them to follow his orders. And uh, I think the crew of the Enterprise was being kind of, um, what's the, what's the right word? Uh, entitled that they had a, a captain who inspected them to follow his orders without question instead of, um, you know, pop up a card. I feel like the, the only, like the overarching issue I, I feel like that we see in the episode is that in a in a an ideal world if you're transitioning captains and command styles you do it at a time when ideally you're not going into a combat situation and he oh yeah he also said way to put a well-oiled machine on the chopping block in the midst of a potential battle well i don't think the crew of the enterprise was ready for a battle at least that's what's definitely jellico's point of view 
and he was trying to get them into shape. He thought their discipline was too lax. And, and honestly, I wouldn't say that it is the job of a captain to change his command style to meet the expectations of a crew. That the, the job of the crew is to step up to the expectations of the captain. And, and honestly, like, like I said, I, I feel like Riker was kind of the thing hampering it. That people kept coming to him and saying, you know, it's, it's not fair that he wants us to go to four shifts. And Riker should have said, fair or not, he's the captain. You need to do this. You know, I, I have What's every... Comp and it looks like OBS disconnected for a second, but I think we're back now. Okay. So I think I think uh, they missed your comment, if you want to make that again. I think at, at the beginning of this season, there was a similar situation where um, the crew was complaining about Hudson, but uh, Ford basically told them to deal with it. He's the captain now. And then the crew met the expectations at that point. Hmm. Because honestly, I, I do think that the Enterprise crew, being the best of the best of Starfleet, could have easily met Jellicoe's expectations. The fact that they refused to do so is where things broke down. That Jellicoe expected them to behave like Starfleet officers, and they acted like, a, as you said, John, somewhat entitled. Entitled children, if we, we say. And we find out that Dag would actually straight up kill that guy. Uh, killed my cousin. And the thing that's kind of bothering him is that he, he enjoyed it. There's a part of him that, that relished. And he, he's wrestling with this. He feels bad that he felt good about it. And Lewis is saying, look, we, we need to focus. We need to take out these missiles. We need to find an energy conductive alloy. And, and so, so Dagwood just rips off a random iron pipe and, you know, slams it into this control circuit. And that, that did it. Uh, they, which uh, short sighted on their part to put them in the room that could take down the missiles. And sci-fi, I was, I was kind of surprised too. I thought they they would have had more shifts than the three shift schedule they did. Um, but maybe a part of that was riders not thinking about things, because there's actually was a study done uh, on U.S. subs, and when they increased the number of shifts, so that uh, did they increase it? How did they do it? Yeah, they, they increased the number of shifts such that you had to come to, on shift more often, but your shift was shorter. They found that that uh, people had higher attention spans and they weren't having to down coffee pots to stay awake at their duty stations. And I actually agree, Sci-Fi. They wouldn't be there on the Enterprise unless they were already the best. They, and I feel like this was the the main issue that as the best, they should have performed like Starfleet officers, especially Riker. Riker's job as the number one in command literally was to get the crew to transition to new captain, and instead he undercut them. He undercut Jellico at every turn trying to make Jellico be Picard. A truck reviewer, that's an interesting idea that Jellico should have just been in charge of the negotiations while Riker being in command of the ship. Well, I think that would be kind of an odd arrangement. I mean, I'm not sure how that would look to the Cardassians if Jellico is negotiating with them, but Riker can still tell them where the ship's going to go or not. Especially since a lot of Jellico's negotiating tactics was, uh, I can blow you up using the Enterprise anytime I want. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which, I mean, that's how the Cardassians were were kind of portrayed 
you know, almost like a Telluride. You you start off by insulting him. You you start off by showing a position of power. So now it's Jellico's turn. Sequest's Jellico's, mind you, turn to go into the ring. And he's going to be up against uh, the new second in command. The the one who I believe replaced him, if I'm not mistaken. And they're going to play the, or combat in the ultimate form of martial arts. Ambu Jitsu. <laughs> But it has to look at least 25% different for legal reasons. I mean, all they need to do is put on a mask to make them blind and they're halfway there. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you look at these weapons and like, they're they're clearly supposed to be these heavy, awkward sticks that have springs inside them. Every time you hit, you hit hit each other. You hear this kind of springy, clanging noise. But I I just don't see how this is supposed to be anything except an improvised weapon. You know? Yeah. Oh no, I need to fight someone. Well, here's a giant metal stick. I guess I'll use that. And she's also a little crazy. She's trying to claim that anarch an anarchy is a natural state of people. And he, Jellico tries to do the honorable thing. He he disarms her and he's like, "No, I'm not gonna, you know, fight for your amusement." And she, she sucker kicks him, kicks him in the kidneys. <laughs> But as we, we see in the past, Jellico is no slouch. He knows how to do hand-to-hand -hand combat. I mean, he took out uh, Dion's assassin a couple episodes ago. Yeah, he did. And Jellico, he, he shows that he, he's not just a competent military officer. He's, he understands people. He understands what the, the heart of what's going on here. I refuse to call him Hudson sci-fi. <laughs> uh, Hudson says, you haven't found your humanity here. You've lost it. And at one point during the fight, he said, you know, think about your daughter. How, well, how would she feel about this? You know, try, trying to appeal to her humanity. And somehow he, he's able to just completely slip out of these bonds. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, his, his speech didn't go well, and he's going to be executed until they enact their daring escape. And now this second command lady, she's she's decided that she's going to be on Team Jellico. And she goes, you know, I, I would have been two minutes ago. I would have killed you myself, but now, uh, now I've changed my mind. But I don't have a daughter. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> But hey, if I did have one, there wouldn't be a world to live in if we went forward with this. Trek for viewers saying the thing that got me in that episode, Chains of Command, the other Chains of Command, 
was that LaForge said to Jellicoe that Riker is the best pilot on board, which, to be fair, they, they did set that up and encounter at Far, far Point, that Riker was supposed to be this really good pilot. Uh -huh. uh, but he would have thought that Data would have been the best pilot on board. Well, the sci-fi says Data doesn't have instinct. And we've seen a couple of times he's been beaten because of things like that. Like even Troy beat him on a in chess one time. Did she? Yes. Hmm. I don't remember that one. I believe you, but I, I don't remember that one. But I mean, the... Uh, he wasn't a pack lid, but he kind of looked like one. The episode with the Stargazer... Or not the Stargazer. Uh, that was the Fringy. The episode with the Stargazer-like craft... The uh, War Games peak episode. Performance. That's it. Peak performance, which was a really good uh, Doctor Plazowski episode. Plazowski, yes. Sorry, I, I've been reading a book that has a Plazinski as a character. I'm like, I know it's not Plazinski. That's that's a sergeant in, in the Platypus Police Squad, which my kids love. Fun books. Uh, yeah, he Data was beaten by that guy when they were playing Stratagema. Precisely time. because he was going for the computer route instead of, you know, taking human feints. So Prody, Prody, so Brody, he was convinced by the other members aboard the bridge crew that it was wrong to launch missiles. Uh, and even though Jellicoe gave firm command that not a second after 8, 8 o'clock is when you're supposed to launch the missiles if I failed the mission, they, they waited. And he waited for the last second possible. And now the sequest, they have no option. Brody says, you know, launch missiles. And let's pray that, that our people are away as well. And now we're, we're finding out, I, honestly, I love this, this part here. We find out that the refugees that Jellicoe refused to fire on died a few days later anyway. That they, they made it to a, another place and they got hit, uh, you know, military strike. And... The second command here, she goes, you know, if you had, if you had the chance, would you have launched the first nuclear strike? And you see, he's wrestling. He, he, he honestly doesn't know. He goes, I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe this is what I wanted the whole time. And they both accept their fate. You know, they're not gonna, they're not gonna shy away from it. They're not going to pretend like this is some tragedy. They they made their choices, and they're accepting it. Hey, Thomas, welcome back. A single tear going down Henderson's face. No lifeboats on sensor, just debris. But wait, what's this? O'Neill has something. Just debris and one UEO assault craft asking for permission to board. So Sci-Fi, while he doesn't have the right or authority to launch first, he did have the means to launch for first. The, the base they had dropped it on was fully stocked and they had taken control of it. I mean... They had been given control from the get-go, but their isolation down in the trench, things had gone bad. Things had gone real bad. And they were quite ready to strip away the illusion of peace and give the war that people really needed to survive. But Jellico, he he's recognizing that these people, they made the wrong choices, uh, but history shouldn't think of them by their final actions. So instead, he just wants to report to the world that it was a system malfunction. 
And then meanwhile, he's, he's about to get the same treatment. He goes and asks Brody for information. They like, brief me. What ha happened aboard here while well, I was gone? He goes, nope, uh, nothing, nothing went wrong. Everything was smooth sailing. And Jellico, I, I feel like Jellico knows that he's being lied to a little bit here. But, you know, he, yeah. you know, Brody tries to stand up and he grabs him, sits him back down and said, keep the helm. Let's get out of here. Uh, Sci-Fi saying, so this was a play on the Crimson Tide movie. Same scenario. You know, I, I haven't seen that one. Is that the one where well, the people shout Wolverines? Um, not, not that I know of. Um, if, as I recall, in that movie, there is a, a missile submarine where they get you know, orders, so they're not sure if they're supposed to fire missiles or not. So there's a, a conflict between the captain and the first officer about it. Hmm. Hey, Super Blubber Puss, how you doing tonight? Yeah, family, family's doing fairly well tonight. Had a had a couple sick days over the weekend uh, and yesterday, but everyone seems to be seems to be doing well tonight. Honestly, we thought we were out of the woods. A Aiden got sick first. We thought we were out of the woods just for Owen to get sick. So hopefully, hopefully Eden doesn't get sick next. You, know, you get tired of cleaning up sick. I know what you mean. <laughs> uh, Sci-fi is saying Roll Tide, USSA, Alabama. No, so the movie I'm thinking of it was, it was a movie where Russia launched an attack into America, and a bunch of survivalist teenagers had to save the day. I want to say they yelled Wolverines at some point in the movie. Yeah, that's not the same movie. Red Dawn, maybe? I feel like Red's in the name. I don't know. It's probably not, but <laughs> I feel like Red's in the name. Hopefully someone in chat is like, oh yeah, Matt, you're thinking of this obvious, super famous movie and getting all the details wrong, as one does. As this one does. Anyway, John, how did you like tonight's episode? I thought it was a good one. Um, you know, there was the different chains of commands we dealt with. Um, and yes, the people down there on this base were crazy on the one hand, but even at the end in that last scene with, you know, the Admiral and the Commander, they seem to be still being like struggling with their humanity. Like you said, they accept their fate. Mm-hmm. So, so it wasn't really black and white in the end, at least that's the impression that I got. Yeah, and obviously I, I was talking over it as I do. Uh, but at the end, um, Lewis was making a speech to Dagwood about how everyone has this nature of violence within them. And, you know, it's it's something we, we battle against, that the, the secret to humanity is, you know, taming these base instincts of ours. And... That's why Dag was like, oh, yeah, well, this is what I'm using to, to tame it. And it's his cockroach, showing that he actually cares, cares about life. Um, which I, I did enjoy the episode. I, I liked it. The way they the way they did the stuff with Dagwood, where after being whipped a handful of times, he went into full on murder mode. That was the part that kind of left me saying no that, that doesn't make sense like th we've seen Dagwood we've seen how Dagwood acts and this didn't seem very Dagwood like yeah it usually takes him a lot more to get him going like I, I think it would have been I think it would have been much more interesting so at, at the end uh, Hudson he breaks free and Dagwood breaks free because, you know, nothing really contains Dagwood. He's just pretending to be bound to humor people. But he, he breaks out of his bonds and then they cut Lewis free. And they're, they're defeating their captors. It's right before they're going to be executed. And one of the guys, he grabs a gun and points it right at 
Lewis. And there's a moment where he stops, where where Dagwood stops, and he's clearly wrestling with the fact that Lewis is about to die, but he doesn't want to kill someone because he he just did that. He killed he killed my cousin, and he doesn't want to do that again. So you see him wrestling for a moment, like, oh my goodness, what do I do here? I think that's the moment where he actually kills a guy. And now he's wrestling with this idea of, well, I killed someone, but it was to save you. And, you know, there's a part of me that that is happy that he's dead because you lived. And then you, you still have the same you still have the same conversation, but you don't have this whole I got whipped five times and now I killed a man <laughs> like and I relished about it a little bit. That's the only nitpick I had for the episode. Other than that, I thought it was a good, well done episode. Yeah, I think it was pretty solid. My uh, main uh, nitpick would be the lack of dolphins. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously. I feel like that kind of goes without saying. Just the bigger I throw it in there. And, uh, yes, actually, I was right. I just looked it up, and it was the movie Red Dawn, where there's some some kid who holds up a, some rifle-looking thing and yells Wolverines. So it, it's in the original one. Their sci-fi. Uh, was that 1984? Yes, 1984. Uh, so, I did really enjoy the episode. I really enjoyed... I, I wish they could have looked more into it. But they definitely looked more into it than they would in Season 2. Like, Season 2 would have had none of this retrospective stuff. But I, I like the fact that... Um, like you said, uh, John, that they didn't make it black and white. That at the end, they both had a moment where they looked into themselves and questioned, like, have we lost sight of the truth? Have we lost sight of our humanity? Have we been making the bad choices here? And they didn't really come out and say yes, uh, but they thought about it. And I think that's much more realistic that people don't necessarily make just this, you know, flick a flick a switch. Oh, I've I've been reformed, uh, changed. They they struggle with it. They think about it. They consider consider it and wrestle it. And seeing them starting to make that journey, well, where maybe maybe if they had a chance to get away from this isolated environment at the bottom of the deepest trench in the world, then maybe they could have. You know, regain their humanity. Uh, but I, I like the fact that we at least saw them taking that first step. Uh, Thomas says, breaking news, Atlanta Braves beat the Kuroga Astros and win the World Series. I didn't realize that Kuroga had a team called the Astros. Uh, it's news to me. I don't really follow baseball. Now, I knew Houston had some Astros. Uh, in fact, I, I, for a long time, I had a Houston Astros hat. Uh, I, I believe I had stole it from my dad for a little, little bit, but I gave it back to him, but uh, he's dead, so I'm not sure who has that Houston Astros hat now. Maybe my sister does. Uh, but it, it looks like the Houston Astros... Ooh, ouch. It looks like they got smoked. Is that today's? Yeah, Houston Astros lost hard, zero to seven. That's just... That's not good. That just hurts. <laughs> that hurts bad. And that's that stinks. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I don't really care that the Houston Astros lost against the Atlanta Braves. Uh, but what I do care about is that they lost so spectacularly in the last game of the... Uh, the World Series. Like, you want the last game of the World Series to be more neck and neck. That's a more exciting game, but when at the uh, the bottom of the third ending, you've already scored enough runs to win the game, that's that's not fun. I mean, maybe if you're a Brave fan, you really like it, but I, I like some more back and forth. I like, I like things to be close. Well, Thomas says the Astros are cheaters. That's why they're Krogans. I know that would make sense. I don't know what specifically they did. Did, did they cheat, or people, or people just upset that they were doing well? 
I don't know. Because I think people may have just been upset that they were doing well in uh, the past few games. No? No, just one game? Just one game they did well. Wow. This series should have been over for... Do they do the... Okay, so... Everyone be impressed that I understand that there's a bottom and top of ending and that there is a team called the Houston Astros and the Atlanta Braves. That's good for me. But it looks like they lost yeah. one, two, no, one, two, three. Okay, okay, never mind. It, it looked like they had lost a lot of them because uh, I, I wasn't sure if they did seven games no matter what. Or if they did a best three out of seven or four out of seven. Uh, Thomas says they actually cheated a few years ago. Oh, uh, okay. I thought they were called the Oilers. I. Uh, there is an Oiler team. I don't, think I, don't, baseball, though. I don't think it's a major league team. Or a professional league team. Who are the Oilers now? The, there is a the Houston Oilers. They're a I want to say they're a minor league for football. What do you call that? I, I don't know what the the American Football League. There we are. And then they, they became the Tennessee Titans. That's what it was. Yeah. So, yes, we used to have a Houston Oilers team in football. And then they went to Tennessee and became the Titans, which I, I thought was lame because I, I do remember that. Because it may surprise y'all to know, I actually used to be in a, a very big sports family. So I, I came to know a lot of the broad stroke of, of sports in general. So at 90s would have been my peak peak sports knowledge time. Uh, and Thomas is doing a bunch of face palms. But I'm asking Thomas, I, I, I understand I don't know. Uh, what is it? Best three out of four out of seven? Or is it... Uh, seven games yeah. in the World Series, no matter what. Uh, the World Series is best four out of seven, I believe. That'd make more sense. Like, if you get a game four and you've won them all, it just seems cruel <laughs> to keep going at that point. Well, was there anything in this episode, John, that you found less than great? Um... Primarily the uh, absence of Darwin. Um, but then, as you said, you know, it seems like uh, Dagwood got set off a bit too easily based on what we've seen previously. Uh, but that's about all. Well, let's go ahead and wrap this on up. But first, next week, prediction time next week. Sequest Season 3, Episode 6, Spin Drift. Spin Drift. I got, I got nothing. Um, spin Drift. I think this is going to be an episode where we don't see Darwin. And uh, I guess based off the name Drift, let's say that uh, let's say that they are stuck somewhere. Maybe they're they're testing a new type of drive, the spin drift drive, and it doesn't it doesn't perform the way they're hoping it's going to perform, and they they get stuck, and now Dion Internationals or Dion Industrial is is coming in, trying to to get the drive, and it's a race of time to see if. If they can get the sequest repaired in time, or if Dion's going to get there and steal the technology. There we go. <laughs> How's that a guess? <laughs> or a guess uh, out it's of nowhere. Guess. Yeah. Uh, and and Sci Fi saying, yes, four out of seven for a World Series, which has no other countries in it. It's true. True. Well, technically, there's a couple of teams in Canada, right? I'm not, I guess they're not actually in the World Series this time, but... Yes, that's beyond my knowledge. I guess, thanks. Well, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. We will see you next Tuesday, Lord willing, at the same bat time, same bat channel. You guys take care.
Night. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to hit that like button and share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you will. And be sure to hit that bell icon to be notified of all the updates I do on this channel. If you want to support the work I'm doing here, then I hope you'll consider becoming one of my Patreons, where you'll get early access to all kinds of videos. And until the next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.